Our final uh, presenter is Hani Mahmoud. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, a case of real time three D versus to cardiography guided coronary sinus stimulation during percutaneous mitral annuloplasty for a patient with coronary severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation. Uh, the coronary sinus has become uh, a clinically important uh, structure, especially for its role in providing access for different cardiac procedures, such as arrhythmia, ablation, and bivitrical pacing. Uh, recently, a great uh, advance and interest uh, with the coronary sinus has been because of this year of percutaneous valvular interventions. Fluoroscopy with or without 2D uh, TEE was a good standard method for guidance. Carolyn device. Uh, this device is an innovation to help patients with severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation who have high risk in surgery. That's why those kind of patients are used to be refused from the surgical side because of their high mortality during surgery. They were kept only on medical treatment. So one of the alternative medications now uh, is using this device, Carolyn device. This is an illustration made by the manufacturer just illustrating how uh, this system is being introduced and working. By knowing the anatomy of the heart, we know that the coronary sinus is encircling the mitral annulus from outside, as you can see here. So, they thought to introduce a catheter through the severe vena cava, then wrapping around the mitral annulus from outside through the coronary sinus by introducing this device through the catheter like that. This device has two anchors, has distal anchor and proximal anchor. And then releasing the proximal anchor by withdrawing the catheter over this device like that. And then closing or tightening the distal anchor distally in the distal end of the coronary sinus like that. And then withdrawing the catheter again to expose the other anchor. But before that they will tighten the whole system to tighten the mitral annulus. As you can see here, the co-application now is better than before. This is only fits for patients with functional MR. And then they will release the proximal anchor, which is usually larger than the distal one. And then by closing this and releasing, releasing the whole system, and this is the final result, with the device well seated inside the coronary sinus with the mitral annulus compression. This patient uh, was one of my patients, 78 years old, female patient, uh, undergoing percutaneous carolin mitral and annuloblasty device therapy for chronic severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation after she was rejected from the surgery. After insertion, during the procedure itself, after insertion of the coronary sinus catheter through the right internal jugular and then through the superior vena cava entering the right atrium, there were, there were many trials to cannulate the coronary sinus by this approach, but the interventionist was not able to get the coronary sinus by fluoroscopy with the two-dimensional T. So what happened? I thought to activate the zoom mode, which one of the modes uh, of the three-dimensional echocardiography to get the interatrial symptom view from the right atrial perspective, as we will see now. You know, uh, the interatrial symptom is not a line, like what we are seeing in the 2D echo. It's a wall separating the right atrium from the left atrium. So if I can, by three-dimensional echo, get the view for the interatrial symptom wall from the right side, so it, as if I'm standing in the right atrium, looking to the symptom as a wall, and here should be the left side. And then flipping the wall like that, to be able to see and face view of the interatrial symptom with its visits. So severe vena cava should be out, superior inferior vena cava should be down, and beside it, right beside the inferior vena cava should be the coronary sinus, and here should be the aorta. So it creates a common language between me and the interventionist who used to use the anteroposterior view and fluoroscopy to know what's anterior and what's posterior. But here fluoroscopy is only seeing catheters and metals. He doesn't see tissue. From here I can show him both. I can show him the catheters and I can show him the tissue as well. As you can see here, This is the anatomically oriented interatrial symptom view from the right atrial perspective. This is the whole septal wall 
I'm standing in the right side, the right atrium, and there behind the screen is the left atrium. So this is the superior vena cava, superior, inferior vena cava opening is here. This is the this thing is the prominent station valve, and this one is the way to the coronary sinus. Coronary sinus opening is here, and here should be the aortic valve. So this is superior, this is inferior, and this is anterior, this is posterior. And then he started to introduce his catheter. I could see his catheter now coming from the superior vena cava, and it still is directed towards the station valve, as you can see here. So it was easy for me to tell him, you need just to move anterior to face the lumen or to face the way of the coronary sinus. Then this is what he did. He moved the catheter anteriorly, and he is now facing the, uh, he passed the station valve, and he is now facing the coronary sinus. This thin structure here, this is the severity of the, severity of, of the coronary sinus. And then, it was easy again to tell him, you need now to go inferiorly to calibrate the coronary sinus, and this is what he did. This is the catheter now, coming from the superior vena cava, passing the station valve, calibrating the coronary sinus. So the position was confirmed by fluoroscopy and uh, by the pattern of the pressure. This is the device outside, and this is the shape of the device after deployment in fluoroscopy. This is the distal end, this is the proximal end, which is usually larger. And this is the final result for this patient with magnific magnificent reduction of the MOR severity, and you can appreciate here the compression caused by the device with screen-shaped coronary sinus here. And MR reduction is usually not like surgery. If we achieve this degree of MR reduction percutaneously, this is well and good. This is quite enough for this patient. So in conclusion, coronary sinus cannulation is not always, not always uh, feasible during uh, using fluoroscopy and two-dimensional TEE. Uh, three, uh, real-time three-dimensional TE can be used to get coronary sinus cannulation as it provides an anatomically oriented, informative, and first view of the coronary sinus system. It can help also reducing the fluoroscopic radiation time. Thank you.